I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. Today I'm going to talk about something that is quite serious, four tips to deal with body image issues. I suffered and really battled when I was in my early teens, right up until I was about 18, 19, really battled with body image issues. And it took actually took years to get through, but it was really bad. I nearly got anorexia when I was at, um, 18 years of age and early then going into university, the first year at university. And, and it's it's really hard. And in, we know this is such a problem in today's social media world where, you know, the curated body image and value sort of value placed on the external and so we we understand that and we also understand that there's the danger of social media in not being managed when you're constantly scrolling through social media and looking at you know the, what is considered a, the ideal body or something like that and how that can really you know why, why is in your brain whatever you're looking at is whatever you're exposed to whatever you are scrolling and thinking about and looking at 10 minutes of just scrolling through social media you've wired that, that in your brain and if you do that every day without managing it you're going to be wiring that into a very strong network that becomes a habit so within 63 days and that may sound like a long time but you know just Think of it, nine weeks of scrolling is kind of like three months of scroll, just under three months of scrolling through social media. You've been doing that for the last few months. You've been scrolling through, you know, how have you been managing it in terms of body image? Are you looking, have you actually stopped and questioned how you're looking at yourself as you're scrolling through that social media? This is just an example of how we can get stuck in the wrong body image. Uh, obviously, when I grew up, there wasn't social media, but there was a standard that we saw in magazines and, you know, how you're supposed to look as a woman and that kind of thing. And this obviously affects both male and female and all genders. This is a challenge. So here are four tips to deal with body image issues. It's not, this doesn't replace therapy, but these are tips that are helpful to have on hand that as you listen to this, if this is something that you have a problem with, this is something that you need, you know, listen, write these down and practice using these tips over a period of 63 days. As you've heard me so often say that in order to wire a network into your psychoneurobiological network, your mind brain body connection in, uh, that will drive you in the right direction is going to take 63 days. So at least which is in around nine weeks. So you've got to deliberately and intentionally practice using these tips to help deal with the body image issue. So listening to this podcast alone won't be enough. You're going to have to actually practice these things I'm telling you. So here are four, there's so many things we can do, but I'm going to give you just four very basic, very helpful tips that have helped me, so many of my patients, and so many people that I know that are battling with body image issues. The first thing is practice self-compassion and positive self-talk. Now, I know that we hear this all the time all over the place. So what does this look like? It looks like being kind to yourself. Treat yourself with the same kindness that you would treat someone else. And this is, goes to an example. I would look in front of the mirror and I would say, see this body that I didn't like. And, and I remember doing this and, you know, going back to that 18 to 22 year old, you know, I feel so sad for what I lost and the energy that I put into that. But I would look at myself and say, I hate your, I hate this body. I hate what you look like. And, you know, it was, it was negative self-talk. So I had to learn to actually be able to look at my body and say, hey, you know what? This is, thank, you know, this is a great, you know, this, you look great. You, this is, this is who you are. This is beautiful. You, you look at what you can do with your body, that kind of stuff. And to catch that, that self-talk and be very aware, stand back and observe that self-talk and catch myself. Sometimes I'd just be, you know, driving somewhere and it would come into my head or I'd be, see someone that I consider to be the perfect body shape. And I would find myself, you not like that. It's not good enough. So I had to practice, and so many of my patients can speak, and if you can relate to this as well, and you've heard this before, so I'm just encouraging you, you've heard this before, catch yourself, be aware, be curious about those that self-talk, be very aware, and catch yourself, and be kind, and replace it with good, you know, challenge yourself to find statements that counter that. So um, if you find yourself thinking, you know, you could ask you could ask yourself things like, is this based on truth or is this distorted? Am I trying to be something that I can't be? Is it really necessary? Do I want to pour that kind of energy? It's exhausting. It's disruptive. It affects your mood and, you know, give yourself that kind of self-talk. And it's not really necessary. It's not making you happy. 
You know, is it making you happy? Is it making you feel peace? Is it stealing your peace? You know, to ask yourself those kinds of things. And then and you be very kind to yourself. Hey, listen, it's stealing your peace. You, you don't have to go through this. You, you, you're fantastic how you are. You can, you know, that... Trying to live up to someone else's ideal isn't isn't the greatest idea because you can't be anyone else's body. You can only be your own body and find your. You know, those are the kinds of things that are very important that we practice. You know, and the tone that you use with yourself, the kind of the way you phrase your words, the things you say to yourself. So I always think, would would you say if, if you know someone was battling with a body image issue, how would you talk to them? And I know you've heard this before, but I'm just really reminding you today. How would you talk to them? You're not going to, you know, yell at them and tell them they're stupid and that they look terrible and that they should look like this. You're going to say, "Hey, listen, you're amazing like you are. You know, you, 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 your body's your body. You can do so much with your body. Look what you can do. Let's thank your body for a change instead of, you know, beating down on yourself. And is it really real? You know, all those kinds of things. How would you speak to someone else? Practice speaking like that yourself. Then the second tip is to focus on health and functionality. Okay, so shift your focus. Practice. This takes practice, guys. This is not going to work the first time. Instead of fixating solely on appearance, concentrate on what your body can do and what it feels. So instead of that external, I look like this or this shape or whatever, or whatever it is that you're looking at, cellulite or whatever it is that you're looking at, instead of rather focus on what you can do, like maybe you did yoga that day, maybe you you kept going through a 12-hour day of work and you're still smiling. You just did an incredible hike. You um, carried that, you mowed the lawn. I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just thinking you carried heavy things up the stairs. You got through a day. Just, you know, focus on what you, what you, uh, uh, the functionality and how that feels. And also then, you know, prioritize health as over appearance. You know, what makes you feel good if you, you know, do that kind of exercise, does it make you feel good? If you have a sauna, does it make you feel good? Does it, what can you do that makes you physically feel great? So in other words, focusing on functionality, what your body can do, what you, makes you physically feel better um, instead of what you look like externally. It's how you feel and your functionality. Then this is, goes to the social media thing that I started off with. Limit exposure to unrealistic standards. So this is an intentional, deliberate, stand back and observe yourself. Use what I call the multiple perspective advantage. Be very aware. It's, this involves, you know, stand back and observe yourself involves self-regulation. This is real mind management in action. And so observe yourself. And if you find yourself happen to be just catching up on you know what's going on on Instagram and you happen to see someone who you admire and you see their great body and you think oh and you feel that like you know that that pull or that gut wrenching sort of ache or you feel yourself going to a negative place and so if you as you feel that you know catch that as I mentioned in the beginning um, and limit yourself limit that exposure whatever you are looking at and thinking about is growing and that's going to drive you so if you limit it okay I'm not going to think about this I'm not going to look at this I'm not going to spend time I'm going to think of something else and then transition to something else um, get yourself occupied I'm sure you've got lots of work to do there's lots of things to do we're all very busy so don't allow yourself to stay in that place because just remember whatever you're thinking about is growing whatever's growing is driving you so if you limit the exposure it can't grow it can't drive you and also you can't, you, 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 nothing that, like, for example, I had the issue with eating and body image and I say had, but that didn't, didn't go away. I've changed what it looks like in my networks, but it can be triggered. So if I feel myself triggered, then I can limit my exposure and I immediately transition and it's easier now to do. I can do it really easily, very easily. And I know what triggers me and I can very easily transition because I've practiced. It's not something that was easy at first, but at practice, it's going to take at least 63 days. So limit exposure. I don't allow myself to stay there. I don't want that driving me. Ask yourself, I'm looking at that. It's making me feel like this. Do, that's growing in my brain and my body and my mind, and that's going to drive me. It's stealing my peace. It's making me feel unhappy. It's affecting my mood. It's going to affect my relationships. Do I want to go there? It's going to affect my health. I know where I can go with that, or something like that. And you say, no, I don't want that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Right, find that transition activity. Get yourself occupied with something that you know is going to, it's going to get you caught up in something that's um, going to consume your mind. That's a good thing. So maybe it's reading your favorite book. Maybe it's getting into whatever work activity you, you're doing. Um, try and make it maybe a fun thing um, so that it's easier to transition over. 
And then um, so be, now other things that you can do is um, just, you know, keep reminding yourself that media promotes unrealistic and idealized body images. You know, we know that, but just remind yourself that because you can look at something, you can know what I've just said, but you can look at that and you are still influenced by it. Let's be honest. You can say, I know I mustn't. I know these things that, that Caroline is saying, but you're still looking at that and deep down inside you're still comparing. You want to look for that. And you want to catch that and limit that exposure. Okay, you want to actually believe what you know to be true and practice. And that's going to take practice. Because okay, I'm going to stop doing this now. I know what it does. I'm going to practice. I'm going to, when it comes up again, you limit the exposure and so on. Um, and also, you know, see what if you if you are looking at something that is triggering you or activating you. I don't like the word trigger. I like the word activate. Um, the negative feelings about you and your body. You know, that's once again don't. Look at it. Stop yourself. Do that transition as I as I suggested. And then curate your social media. Unfollow accounts. You've heard this a million times. I'm going to remind you again. Unfollow accounts that make you feel inadequate and follow those that promote body positivity and diversity. You will find a lot of fantastic accounts that do that. One of the podcasts that I think is fantastic for this is Ai Wei, Jam Jamila Jamil, who's a friend of mine who's absolutely amazing. I've been on her podcast. She's been on mine. She has a phenomenal story and an incredible podcast. So if you find yourself battling, go listen to that podcast. Um, so, you know, there's so many great ways that you can div divert your attention and learn better, better information, get more, get why and better information to help you. And then don't be scared to seek support and professional help. You know, you may have had it in the past. You may need it again. That's okay. Whatever it takes to help you rewire your networks and have a sense of peace in your life and not be consumed by something that drains your energy and that is life-threatening. Having a body image issue which leads to controlling eating is a life-threatening um, challenge, mental health challenge, and therefore do not be scared to seek professional help. Talk to someone. Share your feelings with friends and family or a therapist. Maybe get an accountability partner. You know, my husband was fantastic. He knew that I had this issue. I spoke to him about this early in the marriage, and whenever I felt this thing coming on, he would, you know, I could say something. He knew. He could read it, and he could see it, and he would help me, or I would ask him. My big sister would often, um, one day when I was really battling with calorie counting because I got consumed with that for years, I'll never forget her saying thing, something to me. I was looking at this apple, and all I wanted was to eat this apple. But I was controlling calories. I think I was around about 21 at this at the time and my sister came up to me and she said how many calories is that apple and it was that statement that made me realize what I was doing and it literally set me free to gosh I am looking it's almost like I didn't I knew I was doing it but I didn't know I was doing it and I looked at that apple and I realized oh my gosh and I could tell her the exact amount of calories and I realized hey I'll be doing this and she said yeah you've been doing this I've, and I talked to to with her, she became an accountability partner and helped me as well. This was before I met my husband. You know, so get people in your life to help you and don't be scared to seek support. This is a very, very difficult thing to deal with. I can relate to it. And so many people battle with body image issues. Okay, remember that changing your perspective and improving your body image takes time and effort. Remember the 63-day cycles I always talk about, okay? I still do scientific research in that area. I am doing a big study at the moment where I'm looking at exactly what you can expect at different stages as you learn to create a new habit behavior. And I'll be sharing that with you in the meantime. You can learn how to do the NeuroCycle. I have the Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess book where you can learn how to use the NeuroCycle. I have my NeuroCycle app. Um, th this book is for adolescents and adults. And I also have my latest book which helps children as young as two and three. You know, the children as young as four are battling with body image issues. So this is something that we need to catch very early on and this book can help with mental skills of dealing with things like body image. Well, I hope this has helped you and good luck out there. I know you can do this and I, and go listen to the, the, um, the iWay podcast or any other podcast. There's some really, really great ones out there that can help you. Maintenance phase is another one that can really help you with managing your body image issues. So the four things very quickly, practice self-compassion and positive self-talk, focus on health and functionality, limit exposure to unrealistic standards, seek support and professional help. Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time.